working with photographers for years. I actually loved collaborating with another person. I didn't have a professional camera and I was still practicing makeup in the early days when I first arrived in college, modeling my makeup art for whoever wanted to spend their weekends photographing me. I love challenging my team to be more adventurous creatively, but sometimes I get myself in trouble. I once got hypothermia from a photo shoot. I had trekked across campus to meet my photographer with my makeup already done on my face, which garnered a lot of head turns from students I passed by. The ground had fresh snow from the night before. When I got to our meeting spot, he led us a little off campus to this area with lots of beautiful houses and there was a courtyard behind one that looked untouched. A couple inches of beautiful white powder covered everything from the thin vines on a wooden pergola to the stone fountain centerpiece to the branches on bare trees. I could see my breath in the air with every exhale as my photographer tinkered with his camera settings and I thought of ways to pose in the space. Working in the freezing weather is not ideal, but the mornings after snowfall tend to feel a little bit cozier and warmer to me for some reason, or it might have been the fact that the trek up to this courtyard had warmed up my body just enough to take off my winter coat. So I threw my thick brown down jacket off to the side and he snapped photos of me quickly. Whenever we paused, I'd throw the coat back on to stay warm. Eventually, I noticed that I couldn't even feel the cold anymore, so I ended up making the poor decision of keeping the coat off between takes as to not ruin the outfit underneath. Being so focused on getting the photos, I wasn't paying attention to how much time had passed until I realized that my face and extremities were numb, my fingernails were blue, and I started to get very drowsy. We quickly made our way out of the courtyard back into the heated college dorms and found a couch to sit on. I kept shivering in my coat and couldn't seem to get warm. I could feel my pulse and my breathing were slow and I was on the verge of passing out. I didn't want to freak out my photographer so I didn't say anything besides the fact that I was very, very cold. Eventually, with some warm water and rest, my body temperature returned to normal, but I definitely realized that this was probably not the smartest decision I've ever made. Turns out, my mom didn't think so either because when I blogged about it, she called me to yell at me about how stupid it was to do all that for a couple of photos. And for once, I couldn't argue with her. Another adventure I had with one of my favorite photographers I've ever worked with got in trouble for being in the women's bathroom during one of our photo shoots. He and I did a whole sleep paralysis inspired makeup series together in my sophomore year of college and he'd help me location, scout, photograph, and I'd take the final photos and edit them in a surrealistic way. The shoot we were doing was going to be on my university's campus over the weekend so I decided to do my makeup in the bathroom of one of the nicer buildings I had class in. But because I needed a solid 30 minutes to do my makeup, I felt bad that he was literally waiting outside the bathroom door trying to keep me company by talking to me. Unfortunately, I couldn't prop the heavy door open so I could barely hear him with the echo inside the bathroom. On top of that, the lights were motion activated and automatic. So every few minutes when I was too still in front of the mirror, the lights would shut off and I'd have to wave my arms like a maniac to let the sensors detect movement again. So instead of dealing with being in a scary empty bathroom all by myself, I suggested my photographer just come on in and hang out with me while I did my makeup since there was no one else in the building on the weekends. He was in the middle of taking some cool behind the scenes shots of me through the mirror while I was getting ready when I heard a knock on the door and a familiar bleep of a radio. BCPD, open the door. My photographer and I froze. I opened the door and if I wasn't so terrified of authorities, I would have laughed at the way that this police officer stared at me with half my face painted and then at the pile of photography equipment on the floor and finally at my photographer standing next to me looking pale as a sheet. The officer collected himself and told us that my photographer was not allowed to be in the women's restroom. I turned red thinking about how dumb it was to invite him into the bathroom in the first place, so I explained the situation as quickly as I could, and you could tell by the way he had his hand hovering around his belt area where there was a small pad of paper and a pen that he was conflicted about what to do in this moment. Finally, the officer left us with a warning, and as soon as he was out of earshot, we burst into laughter because we were so, so nervous. The things we do for art, we said. The last photographer I worked with long term was actually my husband, James. 
When we first started dating, we were two broke college students who needed cute date ideas that didn't involve us leaving campus or spending money. James practiced landscape photography when he traveled, but he had never dabbled in studio photography or portraiture. So he started to photograph my makeup art, which made it really easy for me to do new photo shoots from the comfort of where I lived, as opposed to having to find a new outdoor location every single time. At first, we worked really well together, but then as we became more comfortable with each other and our photo shoots started to involve more assistants, models, videographers, I started feeling the pressure of making my vision come alive rather than having fun in the moment. I got really negative and impatient with him whenever the photos didn't turn out the way that I wanted, and unknowingly, I turned my husband into an emotional punching bag. One day, he called me out for not being the nicest person regarding my feedback, and I felt so bad, and I apologized because honestly, I wasn't even aware of my behavior being so sour towards him. And the last thing I wanted was to be unpleasant to work with. What was once supposed to be an exciting way to spend time together became work as I started to pursue content creation as a career. On top of that, I would try to submit my work to magazines and realize that they would often only credit my husband as the photographer and me as the makeup artist, instead of crediting me for all the other roles that I played even if I came up with the idea, designed the makeup, directed, modeled, and retouched the final shots. It was frustrating that there was a point in my life where he would literally spend a few minutes clicking the camera button for me just so it made it easier for me to photograph my makeup artwork, but the world didn't recognize all of my efforts and only credited the person who took the photo. So this is the point when I decided to stop working with photographers. I had figured out a lighting setup that I liked for my photo shoots. My husband helped me find a way to tether the camera to my laptop so I could see myself on the screen and shoot remotely. From there, it was smooth sailing. I had full creative control of the entire process and I loved every part of it. It took me a few years to build myself up as a photographer in my own right before I decided I was ready to work with someone else. Now that I know what I can do, I'm extremely picky with who I work with. It's always going to be a risk when you decide to work with someone else because you have to at some level let go of things and be open to the other person's perspective and ideas in order for this collaboration to work. I've previously felt uncomfortable saying what I do and do not like openly, which I realized was just an issue of being a people pleaser. And now that I'm more confident with my own aesthetic, I find it easier to communicate how I want things done without feeling like I'm being mean. It's also important to choose someone you highly respect when working with them. Do your research on the other person's work, hop on a call with them, discuss a plan before moving forward with any projects. I've learned it's also okay to drop projects that aren't working because I've definitely done stuff I didn't want to before. Moral of the story is to chase your hobbies and go on adventures if you can. Maybe don't be as reckless as I was, but you should surround yourself with people that inspire you. Seek out experiences that will show you new things and make new memories. Whatever it is, have fun and stay creative. Thanks for watching.